So one of the things, or one of the themes that we're going to talk about tonight is social emotional needs. And one of the things that I always think is important is to take those two apart. Social development and emotional development are two different things. We, we tend to, especially in, in psychology, it always tends to kind of like stick together, like one social emotional. But social usually tends to, depending on the definition you use, tends to have, um, to encompass the skills you have to deal with social interactions. Emotional development is the range of emotions that you experience and, and how developed they are. But they don't need to match up. You have very socially skilled people with low emotional development. You have very emotionally developed people with relatively little social skill. So it's important to maybe take those two apart. And in that process, look for balance. Because I've heard people say about gifted kids, yeah, they're, they're all ahead. Hmm, don't think that all gifted kids are ahead in, um, in their development. But they're also not all of them are behind. I've seen both situations. But I've seen situations where people thought that the kid was behind and he was ahead. So one of the um, classic examples that's given often is um, there was like a kid, he's about four or five years old and he's standing at the end of the playground and he's really angry and he's shouting, it's not fair, I wanted to play with Johnny. And now the teachers are nodding their head like, oh, he hasn't learned how to play with others and he doesn't understand how, how playing with others works. But what actually happened was that this is little Pete and this morning he decided he wanted to play with Johnny. So in the morning when he came in, 8.30 sharp, he ran to Johnny and said, we're going to play this afternoon. And Johnny said, cool, let's do that. So Pete was ready all day to play with Johnny. By the time, you know, at the end of the day, everybody was going home. Little Johnny didn't have a clue anymore. He forgot about it. So then somebody else asked him to play and he's like, cool. And then Pete's standing there at the end of the playground and he's seeing Johnny at the bike of another mom with another kid going to their house. And he's angry because we had made an appointment to play and he's not sticking to his agreement. That is actually a more complicated form of social interaction than most kids at this age can do. And now he's actually starting to analyze it in his head. Wow, man, how, what would somebody else need to do with me before I would be this mean? Because actually Johnny was waving at him as he went by. Like I would have to hate somebody before. So what did I do wrong? He's making this entire analysis of, of all the group interaction. He's way ahead. But it looks like it's behind because somebody's only looking at his behavior at that point as opposed to asking him what's going on. Um, questions also about social behavior. Um, do, does it only count as social behavior if it's with peers or should it be with everybody? So what if other kids, you know, have an IQ of 40 points less than you do? And probably if you're going to look in your own environment, how many friends do you have that have 40 IQ points less than you do? If you look on average, most people will find their friends, I think somewhere between like 10 points ahead, some 10 points behind. And that's not because we're mean, it's not because we hate other people, but one of the core parts of being friends with others is that others can understand your world and the stuff you're thinking about. And if you're seven years old and you're wondering about life and death, then the list of people you can talk to kind of shrinks dramatically. <laughs> There's not a lot of others that want to do that. Are you then an antisocial kid that you're not talking about your true feelings with others? No, it's just harder to find a match. And then you see kids that have been deemed antisocial and they come to a summer camp or something with other gifted kids and now they're suddenly the most social kids in the world. So does it only count if it's amongst each other or do you have to be sociable with everybody? And is being social, is that an inherent trait or is that a trainable skill? Well, you could have a long debate about that. Probably it's a bit combination of both. Partly it's learned and, and inherit, partly it's inherited. So it's really important to look at this from different vantage points. So I'm going to go through some other things and then we're going to come back to this theme.